about 31, let's take a look at graphing functions using reflections about the x and y axis. So there are two axes I can reflect around, either the x or the y, and here's the rules that, that govern them. So given a function f of x, a new function g of x, which is negative f of x, is a vertical reflection of the function f of x, sometimes it's called a reflection about, or over, or through, the x-axis. So we're going to reflect vertically over the x-axis. And I want you to take note that this negative sign is outside of the grouping symbol, right? It's not in these parentheses. It's outside the function. If you have a function f of x, and then you have a different function, g of x, this time defined as f of negative x, notice the negative is inside the parentheses, inside that grouping symbol. It's a horizontal reflection of the function f of x, sometimes called a reflection about the y-axis. So in example four, we're gonna take a look at different reflections based on where the negative symbol is placed. Is it placed outside of the function or is it inside of the function? Right? Reflection around the x-axis, y-axis. And we wanna to get to the point where when we look at a function, we recognize which reflection is taking place. All right, so with that, I'm gonna scooch this up. And we're going to take a look at example four. All right, so here we go. Let me go ahead and label my x and y axes. And I've showed us a couple of times how to use our calculator to get graphs of functions. So we have a bunch of radicals to graph. We have square root x, negative square root x, two root x, and negative two root x. So things to take note, we have our negative symbol outside of the grouping signs, right? It's outside of the square root. I want to remind you that we've talked about vertical stretching, right? We have our multiplier of two also outside of the grouping symbol, or in this case, outside of the square root symbol. So I'm going to have a vertical stretch here. I'm going to have a vertical stretch plus a reflection. This one will just be a reflection. And I'm going to use my calculator in just a moment to graph all these out. And I gave you the calculator screenshots just so you knew what it should look like. This bad boy, right, our basic toolkit function, now, in terms of domains, we are going to have domain issues because we do have an even indexed radical, right? This is a square root. And for all of these, the radicands are x. So I need my radicand to be greater than or equal to 0. Or if I was going to talk about the domain, let me write the domain up as an interval. So in this case, the domain is all of the numbers between zero and infinity. And we would include zero because we can take the square root of zero. All right, so let me head over to my calculator. Right, and let's just graph our first function. So I'm gonna input square root of x. And I'm gonna hit zoom six. I'm not sure what the last window I used was. So let me reset myself. And there's your basic toolkit function, right? Square root function. We should know what that one looks like. We see the symbol, square root, we're like, boom, got the graph. If you want to use the table function, it can help you get some ordered pairs. Now you see a bunch of errors here because my domain was zero to infinity. I don't have any y values when I'm not talking about x values in my domain. But as soon as zero pops in, you see some numbers start to show up. Now I like to graph the integers. So I see zero, zero, I'll do four, two. Um, the next important one would be 9, 3. So let me go graph those. So I see 0, 0. Got 1, 1, 4, 2, and then 9, 3. All right, so that is f of x. Now I want to graph g of x. All right, we've talked about how it's a reflection. So let's go see what this would look like. So I will do negative square, oops, I overwrote that, excuse me. Let's keep the square root of x in there. And now let's do negative square root of x. All right, now I'm gonna hit, I can hit zoom six or graph. Um, I'm just gonna hit graph because I haven't adjusted my window. So I see square root of x pop in and then you can see the negative square root of x, which is a reflection of this graph over the x axis, right? I flipped right over the x axis. And let's take a look at the value, the table values, right? Zero stayed at zero, but you can see one, right? One, one moved to one, negative one, right? The y value became negative because the negative out in front of that function, right? Instead of four, two, my ordered pair is now four, negative two, right? Everything reflected 
over the y-axis. So again, instead of 1, 1, it's 1, negative 1. Instead of 4, 2, it's 4, negative 2. Instead of 9, 3, it's 9, negative 3. And I can see that reflection over the x-axis, and that is our g function. All right. Now I want to graph h of x. Now h of x is double, right? We see the multiplier of 2, the coefficient of 2. I'm going to have a vertical stretch. All right, and you can start to visualize what would h of x look like. So draw it in your mind before you try and check it on your calculator. All right, I've got an idea. I'm going to go in here, though, and I'm going to type in two square roots of x. I'm going to hit graph, and sure enough, there's, there's the graph I thought I'd be looking at. Now I'm going to go get some y values. I stay at 0, 0, right? But you can see I've doubled. I, I'm no longer 1, 1. I'm 1, 2, right? I'm no longer 4, 2. I'm 4, 4. And if I headed down here to 9, oops, you can see that I'm going to double to 6. So I'm going to double my y values. I'll be 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4, and then 9, 6. All of those y values double. And that's going to be h of x. And then i of x is a negative of h of x, right? It's the reflection of h of x but over the x-axis, so negative 2 square roots of x. So let me go and put that into my, I'll put it into y4 this time. So if I do negative 2 square roots of x, I'm expecting that bottom piece, and there it is. And again, if I want to go compare and contrast, right, instead of 4, 4, I have 4, negative 4. Instead of 9, 6, I have 9, negative 6. So I'm just either reflecting this graph over the x-axis, or you can think of it as doubling the y values of g of x. There's a couple of ways to look at it. So let's go fill this in. And that will be i. All right. So there we go, we've got our first look at what happens when you have a negative symbol out in front of your grouping symbol or out in front of your function. And that graphically results in reflections over the x-axis. Okay, so now let's take a look. I'm gonna scooch this up. We're gonna get B in view. Okay, so B is different in that take note of where the, of the radicand, right? We had x here, negative x here x here, negative x here. So you're seeing the negative inside of the grouping symbol, which for these examples are inside of the square root symbols. Now in terms of g and i, they're going to have different domains. The domains for f and h are still 0 to infinity, just like they were in part i. But for g and a i, I think I just said like they were in part i, like they were in part a, excuse me. But g of x and i of x have different radicands. Here I need negative x to be greater than or equal to zero. We do have an even index, so we need that radicand positive, positive or zero. I need to divide both sides by negative one. And if you'll remember, when you divide an inequality by a negative number, you have to change the direction of the inequality. And zero divided by anything is zero. So my domain here has switched, at least for these two functions. These two are still 0 to infinity. These two, now I need x to be less than or equal to 0. So my domain is now negative infinity to 0. So I have two different domains, just depending on which pair of functions I'm talking about. All right, let's go graph these. OK, now I've already done f and h of x. We did those. They're the exact same functions we graphed in part a. So I'm just going to get them on my on my graph. So 1, 1, we would have 4, 2, I would have 9, 3, and then I would have their reflections. Oops, just kidding. Pretend you didn't see that. We would not have their reflections. We're graphing h of x, so we're doubling it. Excuse me. All right, so let's get this in. This was f. If I want to do h, I'm going to double it, so this becomes 1, 2, 2, 4, and then 9, 6. There we go. And since I was actually just tripping myself up, I'm going to confirm it. So let me go to my y equals. I want this to be 2 square root. Well, actually, I'll just clear this one out. All right, let's see what we have here. 
one, there's square root of x, and there's double it. Okay, great. So now let's take a look at g of negative x, uh, excuse me, of the square root of negative x, which is the g of x function. So I need to, I'll put it in y2, I want to do the square root of negative x. All right, so I'm going to hit graph and let's see what's happening. I think you can see here, I have now reflected f of x over the y-axis, right? Instead of going from 0 to infinity, it's going negative infinity to 0. And if you were to just put your pencil here, you can see this bottom graph is an exact reflection over the y-axis of that graph. If you're having trouble seeing it, I can turn one of these off. I can, if I hover over the equal sign and I hit enter, you can now see that the y, y3 doesn't have, the equal sign doesn't have the black background, so I kind of, I, not kind of, I, I turned it off. So now I'll just see f of x, and then we can see i of x. Or I believe, is it i of x? Just kidding, I can't keep my letters straight, it's g of x. All right, so you can see they're exact mirror images of each other over the y-axis, so we have a reflection there. If I go to my table, and I take a look at this, now this might look a little funky, but watch what happens here, right? So remember your basic toolkit function, right? Zero, square root of zero is zero. Square root of one is one. Square root of four is two. And you see these errors over here. And that's because for g of x, my domain is from negative infinity to zero, not zero to infinity. So if I scroll up, you're gonna start to see that g of x will have function values and all of a sudden now we're violating the domain of square root of x, right? f of x has issues. So let's go see what these are, right? Negative 9, 3, negative 4, 2. And when I scroll down here, I had negative 1, 1 because I have reflections over here. So negative 1, 1, this time negative 4, 2, and then negative 9, 3, like that. So now let me graph this one in. And if you're wondering, like, how do I get negative 9, 3? Well, let's just practice this for a moment, right? If I wanted g of negative 9, that would be the square root of negative, negative 9. And negative of negative 9 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So I plugged in negative 9, and I got 3 back out. That's why I have the ordered pair negative 9, 3. Okay. I also want to double that, right? I want to double this. I want to do two square roots of negative x. And there's a few ways to look at how to graph this one. I could think of it as I need to double the y values off of, oops, let me label it, off of g of x. I could also think of it as I need to do a reflection over the y axis of h of x, right? So both of those ways will get me there. I'm going to go ahead and just enter this in. So this is two square roots of negative x. And when I graph it, there it is. Oh, it looks like I don't have my other graph on. Let me go turn that back on. All right, so I just, again, hovered over the equal sign and hit Enter. And now we have all four of them lit up. I'm going to go to my table and go over to Y4 and take a look at some important numbers. Oops, it's not letting me scroll the way I want. Let me, sometimes you have to scroll up and down. Oh, it's really kind of stuck. Um, usually when you hit the up arrow key, it'll let you scroll up through the x values. For some reason, it's sticking on me. Um, if I need to, I'll just reset my table. I'll ask my text table to start at negative 10, right? So if I hit second and table set, I can say, hey, start at negative 10, because really I wanted us to see negative 9 was, oops, negative 9 was 6. So for that two square roots of negative x, when I plug negative 9 in, I get 6 back out. When I plug negative 4 in, I get 4 back out. So here we go. We would have negative 9, 6. When I plug in negative 4, I would get 4. If I were to plug in negative 1, I would get 2, and then 0, 0. All right, and that would be i of x. So you can start to see all of my reflections and my vertical stretching all in tandem with each other. Now, just for fun. If I look at my graph, this is, to me, looks like half a spider, right? I, I kind of feel like, well, I have four legs of a spider. I'd like the other four. And start to think, what kind of equations would you need to get the other four legs of the spider? Well, I would like 
the reflections of these two graphs over the x-axis, right? I would like this leg and this leg, okay? Well, if I want that, these are f of x and h of x, respectively, so let's go get the negative versions of those. So I need to reflect this graph, square root of x, and I need to reflect two square roots of x. Well, if I want to push them over the x-axis, I need to put a negative symbol in front of them. So I'll do negative square root of x and negative two square roots of x. Now, when I graph them, I should pick up these other two legs. And I'm getting there, right? I need eight legs to make a spider. I have six of them. So start to think, how could I get the functions? I need two more functions. And I could think of it a couple of ways. You can think of, I need to take this leg and reflect it over the y-axis, or you could take this leg and reflect it over the x-axis. And I think that's the one I'll probably go with. So I'm gonna take that function and reflect it over the y-axis. So when I do that, I need to do a negative of the square root of negative x. So I need both of those negatives in there and that should give me that leg. I need one more. So I need to double this. So let me go down to y8. I need negative two square roots of negative x. And there it is, right? I think that kind of looks like a spider, all right? A little spooky here uh, uh, for Math 31, but that's what we got. All right, so on the next page, we're gonna start shifting things up, down, left, and right. So I will see you in a bit. Thanks, gang. Bye.